Okay, we've already got a working game at this stage, but what we now want to do is we want to make it a little bit more challenging. So we want to add some obstacles onto the maze route that we'll either be able to collect and we'll gain us some points, we'll need to add another variable, or that when we touch, we'll lose points. This is a good opportunity to actually use the sprites that are on here. So I'm going to look within the sprites and what I'm going to try to find on here are objects related to computing. So for instance, I can choose a laptop. I'm going to add a laptop in, a little bit too big. Smaller, onto there. And I'm going to add one more. We don't want too many on to start with. And again, we're going to go down and see what other computing type objects we can find within here. So we've got laptops, we've got microphones. Take the microphones next one. Make us a bit smaller. Now, both the laptop and the microphone are sorts of hardware within a computer. So, all I want to do is I want to award points for collecting objects that are computer hardware. But because I've chosen two pieces of hardware, I still need to find one thing on here that is not computer hardware. So, we'll choose an object that is not hardware. In this case, I'm just going to choose something that's very clearly not hardware by choosing a toucan. Okay, <laughs> nothing to do with computing at all. If we touch the toucan, we want to lose points. But if we touch, I'll try and put it somewhere where we can actually get past it. But if we want to touch the computer or the microphone, we want to gain points. Now the programming for these is very simple. I'm going to start with the laptop. Just like with the enormous crocodile and with the end symbol, we want them to appear in the same place each time. So we're going to go to events. When the green flag's clicked, and again, you can make it bigger if you want to make it more visible. We want it to show so it's not hidden. And we want it to start in the position it's in. Okay, that means that if I now move the laptop and I press on the green flag, it goes back to the same thing. So I'm going to do the same with the microphone just to show you again. Okay. When the green flag's clicked, we want it to show and we want it to go to its original start position. We'll do the same with the toucan. When the green flag is clicked, we want it to show and we want it to go to the original start position, which is there. So no matter how much we move these around, whenever we press on the green flag, everything resets nicely except for the two cam, which apparently I pressed on the wrong one. If that happens, that's fine. Drag it out, get rid of this. You should see that we've got different coordinates showing there, so we can pull them back across. Okay. Very occasional on Scratch, things don't update very well. I'm just gonna type it in. So you can see here it says 193, so this should say, 93, and this one says minus 7, so I'm going to just type in minus 7. Okay, you can see I move that again. This time we press the green flag. It's good to test these things. Scratch is awesome, but occasionally you do find a little glitch, and that was a little glitch there. Now, the crocodile can go around and you can touch these, but nothing happens. Actually, our microphone's in the wrong place as well. So we'll set the microphone back where that should have been, which was minus 188 by minus 12. Okay, so when he touches these objects, nothing happens, and we need something to happen. So we're going to go back to variables like we did last time, and we're going to create a new variable. But this time I want to make the variable on the enormous crocodile, not on the microphone. So I'm going to go to enormous crocodile. He's already got a lives one. This one is going to affect all sprites because it makes it slightly easier to apply it. I'm going to call this one points. You can call it score if you want. Okay, so I've got points as zero. You can literally drag these where you want because that's not a very pretty position for mine. Okay. When the green flag's clicked at the start of the game, we set lives to three. Now, points we want to gain as the game goes on. So we're going to set points to zero. So whenever we start, we've got no points. If the crocodile identifies a piece of computer hardware, in this case, the laptop itself, then what we want to happen is we want that point score to go up by one. 
So again, like with the other sensing ones, we're going to go to events. When the green flag's clicked, again, we're going to use a forever loop. We've got quite a few of these happening now. They're all running at the same time. We're going to use an if statement. And just like we did with this one, we're going to say that if the crocodile is touching, you'll see this one's called laptop. So we're going to say touching the laptop. Then what we want to do is we want the score to increase but we also want the laptop to disappear so we can't keep touching it. So what we want to do is we want to go into looks, sorry, variables, and we want to change the points by one. Now you'll see there's a problem here, it's quite funny. When you press on the green flag, we drive across, we touch the laptop, because it continues to touch, our points goes really, really high, very, very fast. So we need that laptop to disappear. So we can go into laptop and we can use the same thing. We can say events, when the green flags clicks, forever on the controls, if it's touching, so this time it's if the laptop is touching the crocodile. So we're going into sensing, if it's touching the enormous crocodile, then what we want to happen is we want them to disappear. So we're going to go into looks on this one, which is what I tried to press before by mistake. I'm going to press to hide. Okay. So we press green flag this time. Crocodile's there. Crocodile goes across, touches the laptop. The laptop disappears and we get one point. So we've done both sides. We set the laptop so it disappears when it touches the enormous crocodile. But we also set the enormous crocodile when it touches the laptop to change the points by one. We can do the same for the microphone. Okay, and another way we can actually do this is we can right click on this and duplicate it. Move it to a space further down. We've got a bit more space. So this time if it's touching the microphone, and again, we have to do the same thing on the microphone one. So we're gonna say events. When the green flag's pressed forever, If it's touching the crocodile, so we want to go into our sensing block. Then we want it to hide. We should now have two points. Keep testing this as you go through. We saw, saw before that when I first put the objects in, first put the new sprites in, they weren't showing. Okay, so that one disappears. That one disappears and we've got two points. Now the last one's slightly different. So we want the two can to lose as a life. The toucan's not our friend. All loses a point, you can choose. So on the toucan, we can do the same thing. Again, we can duplicate this block that we made for the microphone, and we could set change points to minus one, or if you wanted it to be lives, you could set it to change lives by minus one. We go back to the toucan, and again, we want the toucan to disappear, because just like we didn't want to gain endless points from the laptop and from the microphone, both of which were computer hardware, we don't want to lose points from the toucan, which is clearly not hardware or software. So we do the same thing. We go into events. We go in when the green flag is clicked. We go to forever. We put in another sensing one. So if it's touching, and in this case, the toucan is touching the enormous crocodile, so we choose the enormous crocodile, and we set the looks to hide. And now we can actually play our maze, but what would make it much more fun and a lot more challenging would be to add a lot more sprites in. And while the two can work for this because it's not hardware or software, it would be much more interesting to add some actual software in. So you could have an icon for Word, or you could have an icon for Seesaw, or any other program that you can think of that you use on the computer. For instance, you might be at the moment using a particular piece of software. And that would make this a lot more interesting than the game I've put together so far.